Hello and welcome to Crazy Danish Hacker. Today we're going to look at a CTF, more specifically the pre-qualification CTF for the TNV conference in Amsterdam. So before we look at this specific challenge, we'll just make sure that we have burp running. So I have burp running here and the proxy is running and there are no alerts here as well except this one so i'm running burp from a jar file and i'm running it with the java dash jar burp suite and here i'm specifying the maximum amount of ram three gigabytes and the minimum amount which is one gigabyte and next we will configure firefox to use the proxy. So we will click manual proxy configuration and OK. And then we will refresh the page page and you will see that we get an SSL error. So we can fix this error by going here, downloading the certificates. And then we need to find the place where it is. I think it's security maybe. So on newer versions of Firefox, you can just search for what you need. But here it's actually here. So advanced certificates, use certificates, import, and this one. And open. And trust this CA to identify websites. We don't need to identify email users or software devs with this certificate. And we can also examine the certificate to make sure it's the right one. So we'll click OK. And now it should be under P or Port Swigger. And if we refresh, the SSL error is gone. So now we can try and crack the CTF. The about page is just about the company, I think, in Star Wars style, so nothing too interesting. Now, if we take a look at, uh, there are some hints here. So um, I did this qualification before any of the hints. So it was actually a bit more tricky than I would have expected. I thought it would be super easy, but it was actually pretty challenging for a for a qualification, but it's also made by uh, another company that does CTFs for a living, I think. So if we take a look at this, there's not much to go for in the source code. So for a long time, I was looking here and I couldn't really see anything. So eventually, I started looking at this this right here. So of course we can inspect it as well. In the other browsers that I used, I could just double click and select all of the data here. But basically this ASCII, this, ASCII, this whole uh, ASCII art thingy is where the first clue is. So I'm not sure why I can't just, oh, there we go, okay. I'll just select all and then I'll just say G edit. So at first, if we just select all, we, it doesn't look like much, but if we zoom in a bit, we can see it says UA here, CTF 177914 equal 33. So and HP question marks, so that could PHP. So if we go back, we can see dot P. So that means that it's probably a link to a PHP file. And you can also see this is probably from a link as well. So let's just this and we will just remove this right here. And the easiest way to do this this first challenge is basically to, for example, search for this and search and replace. 
nothing. So that's what I did. Anyway, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. So we can see that there are a few artifacts that we have to remove. But it's, it's good enough, you know? So we can do a few educated guesses on what we need to do. So I actually, when I actually tried this at first, I tried using running DeerBuster and it didn't work. So I, try, I found a few files like register, it was just redirecting to the main page and also login. So I didn't have much luck with those files. So if we just remove those dashes, I think we can just remove all of them really. Let's just try, see what happens. And let's try the link. See if we are lucky. And we are. So this next step was a bit tricky. I'll just have to try to remember what I did to fix it. Ah, oh, yeah. So this one uh, was also a bit tricky, to be honest. Even though I'm a web uh, application hacker, this one is quite tricky as well. So if we take a look at the source, I was looking for common tags and stuff like that, but I didn't really see anything. So you can see that uh, the sign-in function says uh, it says get these two values right here and then if the username is the ctf and i know javascript then it says alert it won't be that easy so we can actually try this just to let you see what it does And as you can see, it just said it won't be that easy. So at this stage, I was also waiting a bit and it was a bit ch challenging too, to be honest. But I figured it out after a few moments, I would say maybe half an hour. So as you can see, I didn't actually get this here, to be honest, when I just pressed F12, I didn't get this hint at all. I had to dig a lot deeper. But this is actually a big hint that we need. So if we just open a new tab, then this is actually quite, I don't think this is the full thing, but it's good enough. This is part of a bigger hint actually. So the funny thing is that when you press the F12 button, then the website stops. Because some of this code, this JavaScript code that's been obfuscated slash encoded, it stops the background and it also disables right clicking as well. And I can't remember if it does something else, but I decoded it. So there are a few ways to decode it. In this case, this code looks fairly simple. So we could just try and convert this from hexadecimal to uh, ASCII characters. And that will basically tell us what it does. But if we take a look at, let's try and run it through a JS Beautifier first. So we will just run it through this page. So it's easier to read. And it even deobfuscated the code for us. That's quite nice, isn't it? So apparently it also, yeah, it decoded it so we didn't have to decode the hex. It is possible to decode these bytes in uh, burp, for example. So I'll just show you how it's done. So one way to do it is to just remove the backslash like this, cut it, and then in burp, we can go into the decoder tab and then decode it as ASCII hex. So it says hint script here. And if we go back to the JS Beautifier page, I'll just put it in a text editor so you can see it better. So you can see that's where the hint script is. And let's see if we can, ah, oh, it doesn't have syntax highlighting. I'll just zoom in on this page then. 
because uh, it's easier to understand code when you have syntax highlighting, I think. At least I prefer so. So there we go. Much easier to read. So we have hint script and remove child. So that could be that it's removing an element from that page from before. So let's see hint script. So what it does is that it seems that after the page is loaded right here, if we go into the inspector, you can see we have the diff but we have the diff tag here, a script tag, and then the ending body tag. And you can see here that there is the diff tag and the ending body tag here. So what this uh, code does, where is it uh, there? is that this first part of the code removes this here. And this JS file is basically, yeah, that's basically our code from before. So it's kind of like uh, trolling, troll code, I would say. It's not really the solution or something for the next step, but it is a little hint. So the next thing is that we have, uh, we have this part of the code. Context menu is usually for the right-click menu, and this is uh, an event listener. For example, listen for whenever the context menu is tr is triggered. And I guess this code will basically disable right-clicking. And the next thing here is uh, basically a timer. So after 1000 milliseconds, run this uh, function, and that's basically this command here. And this one, basically says run the debugger after 1000. So there's nothing useful in this code actually, but we will just keep this beautifier page open because we might need it. So the next thing that I did after this was that I was just uh, loading the page, I think in web suite, or maybe I was just looking here to be honest. Because most of these uh, CTFs, uh, they can be solved in just the browser with a few exceptions, of course. So I just pressed Control F5. And then I was just looking at the network stuff, you know, different resources that were being loaded. And after a while, I came across, I can't remember which JS file it was, but one of the JS files has a lot of uh, encoded data. I think it was probably the jQuery file. So we will just close this file again. And we will just open all the resources. So I think that's also what I did. And I was just looking for something odd that shouldn't be there. So there's nothing in here. And... It's annoying that there's no... Uh there's no automatic, uh, you know, uh, wrapping, word wrapping. So you don't have to scroll to the end right here. There usually is when you do it in newer versions and also in general, at least in Windows. So there's nothing in this file. So in the login file, that looks standard. Uh, this one, nope jQuery, I think this one could be it. So we will just save this. This, maybe this one. We can also look in burp because uh, under the target, under P, let's see. We can look at some of the JS stuff and look here. So we've already decoded this stuff. So that was not so interesting. So we have this here as well. Ah, here we go. So it's the jQuery validate minimum. So the uh, the file is normal until here. So that's where the normal file ends and some, uh, some next stuff happens. So we will just copy this into a new file or a new tab right here. 
So at first I thought this was something uh, called JSFUCK, but it wasn't. So I'm actually not familiar with this type of encoding, but I was like, this is going to take ages to decode. So I try. So I asked, actually asked a few people if they could help me out because I didn't want to spend several hours doing it. And yeah, after a while, I actually solved it. So even though it's not very obvious what you have to do, the easiest way to solve it is to maybe use the JS Beautifier first, and then you you know you have a huge file here. So what you can do is that you can uh, you can eval or you can document write the various sections here. So that's uh, that's going to take a little bit of time, of course, but it will make us able to see what's going on with the code. So what we will do is that we will create a new file, I guess, a new HTML file with the JavaScript. So we will just save this into a new file on the desktop, index.html. Well, it could be test or whatever, but we'll just call it index. So now we can open the file on the desktop and load it into a new tab in the browser. So here it is. And here we go. So the file by itself doesn't do anything, but it is useful just by loading it. So now that we have loaded the file, we can, for example, say that we want to, come on, document, right? And then PVC, for example, that should work. And we have an object. So in this case, we will have to, I think we, we could, for example, do something like this, where we say dot, and then specify this first object. And this one is zero. Let's try this one. Oh, we have to remove that colon. And this one is a seven. So without going into too much detail, this is basically zero to, let's see. Yeah, this is basically zero to nine and A to F. So this is just specifying a hexadecimal array from, yeah, zero to nine, A to F. So nothing fancy about that really. But it is useful knowing that it's doing some kind of hexadecimal here. So we will just delete that code. And the next thing that we could do is that we could go to uh, the next part where something has ended. So I'm searching for semicolons here. So we could, for example, try and eval this part here, or not eval, but document alert or doc document write it. So that's also a useful exercise sometimes. So we will say document alert, for example. Save the file, reload. And in case nothing happens, it's also use useful to have the this one open. So in this case, it says document alert is not a function. And that's because I probably just need to run alert by itself. So it says that it's R, this one. So not very useful, but we will just continue. So we can also try and eval some of the final stuff maybe around down here. So let's just see where it begins. So this is inline and this is inline. Let's see. So uh, we could try and go through it like step by step, but what I want to do is that I kind of want to try and just go from, for example, here and then document alerted, or just alert, I mean, not document alert. So we will say alert here. And now we just need to close it the right place. 
So I'm assuming that we might have to close it right here. So let's try. So I added that extra closing bracket. See, and there we go. <laughs> it's just a lucky guess. It's been a few weeks since I did this, so. So I will just explain why that uh, why it wasn't after the last one. So that's because this basically, uh, if you see, if it's like this and at the end, that means that this whole thing is a function. So that's why I was hoping that it was here. In case it wasn't here, then I might have tried, you know, uh, maybe here instead, because this is also calling it as a function. But now you can see we have some uh, we have some more code to work on, and we can see we have an anonymous function. I guess we could load it into the beautifier, even though it's already beautified code, but it's good enough because right here we can see that we have the next step that we want to look at. So if we type in the correct password. Then we will get to the register page and token. And that will be reverse join of the password here. Yeah. That will basically be an MD5 value of the password where the password has been reversed. Okay. Yep. So let's see what does this do? So this looks like it's just waiting to clear if you click the button, the login button. And let's see. So this looks like it's looking at the UID in the top. So if we go back here, it's looking at, uh, at this value after here. So it's looking for the UID, let's see. Yeah. It's looking at, it's actually looking for this, uh, this equal sign. And then it's splitting up. It's uh, basically taking this whole string, looking for the equal sign and then splitting it up into an array. So value zero is UID and value one is this key. And let's see, username password. So this, uh, this does some funky stuff, some encoding. So I'm not really going to bother explaining this because we can just uh, let the JavaScript code do the work for us. But in short, we can see that we have we start at zero. So this is a for loop. And then while uh, from zero to as long as we are below the length of the uh, UID, so that's uh, 16 or 32 characters, I think, then we will just, you know, go, then we will say, you know, what, I mean, then we will just say, I, first it's zero, and then we say, after here it's one, and then we go through the loop again, and then it's two, you know, and then we go through it again. And we can see, for example, at the UID, so that it says that, I don't know what the char code that function does, but at first it will be zero, so it will go, it will look at this number three here, and then it will run this char code ads for the number three. And then there's another for loop, and that will take uh, the key length of this here, this string. And then it will do some stuff. I don't, I can't remember what this does. Uh, I'm not a JavaScript guy, so 100% JavaScript, so I can't remember what this operator does. If it's uh, assigning a variable, if it's XOR or what it is. So I don't think it's XOR, but you never know. And then it's running the char code at for, yeah, at the key. So it's doing some funky stuff, but in general, if you see this type of code and you don't have to you don't have to under, you don't have to understand how it works in depth don't bother so
All right, so we know the, the we know we know the username, so we don't have to solve that. And this is basically some base sixty four stuff, you know, that we have to that it also has to do. So I guess the easiest way that we could solve this is that we could try and say alert. And then we call this here. And we also need to call it, let's see, we need to call it outside this anonymous function. So this is anonymous. So we can just say, close this, close this. Uh, we don't need this. And for the UID, we take it from here. There we go. Where is it? UID. Just do it like this. Username. It's basically this here. Password, we don't know. So we will just set it empty first. Yeah, empty. Because uh, we don't really need to, yeah. And we can just comment out this code, I guess, to begin with. So we don't have any redirects. And then we can just call the login function. That should work. So we will just and we will just say index two. So even though I deleted everything in that file, I just uh, saved it as a new file. So we still have the old HTML file for fun. And we will just specify that we are in the body, so the JavaScript will run automatically. So there we go. And... Interesting. See if it works. So where is the login button? EVCTF. Ah, oh, it's working. So at this stage, you might think, oh, I'm done, you know, finally. So let's just get burp ready as well, because I think we need burp for this. So let's just say crazy tiny shaker. Test at Come. And we will just use burp for this. So we can see we have some uh, some XML. And it says session not approved to approve session send request to this here. So we will just put it in our text edits, I guess. So at this point, you might be like, uh, how do I do that? Because um, that's not super easy, you know? So I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if you saw it, but while I had intercepted the request, I actually sent it to the repeater by pressing Control R. You can also right click and then say send to repeater, but I just press control R instead. So this is a habit that I have whenever I see something interesting. So if we send it like this again, we can see session not approved. So I, I thought, well, let's try this. Nope, doesn't work, <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> but uh, it, I thought it was uh, you know a nice try, you know, just to see if it worked like that. So the next thing that I was like, okay, if it's not like this, then uh, I, I bet it's going to be XML injection because this is basically XML right here. It does say content type text XML, but I was like, well, we might as well just try. So in my case, I didn't bother to do it manually and I just did an active scan and then I probably uh, modified the scanner in the pro version 
to just use XML attacks only or something like that. Um, but in our case, we have to do it manually. So we have to use XML entities. So let's see, XML entities, OWASP. I can never really remember how to do this because these bugs are so rare. But they're actually quite easy to exploit. So here we go. That's basically what we want. So that's for reading files though. But we will get to the the fun stuff in a moment. So we see file, then we say for example etc pass bd and this one here is our XML external entity or XXE. So we will put it let's see here. And as you can see, we can read the etc password file. But we still need to do that request. So what I ended up doing is that I did something like this instead. So we can see it's similar to the attack above. Let's see, maybe it's the same. Yeah, I think it's the same. So even though we can't really see what's going on, I think we can still run it. So we will just open our text editor and then we will try again. So let's see, control R. And then run the program again. And it says session approved. Uh, let's just try run it again. Okay, so we need to, uh, we still need to do a crazy Danish hacker here, I think. Registration complete. So let's see, I think that was the final challenge. So, yep. And now we can just select the password. So, submit. And even though it has ended, uh, yeah, we can still see the teams and the scoreboard. So, for this CTF, you had to be on site to do it. So I got it like a notification the day before that uh, I could come if I wanted to, but that was too short notice. So you might be able to guess uh, which one I am on this list maybe. But uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. There were a few challenges that you could do. So let's see. Uh, you could do the dummy challenge and the Pi debug. There was also another debug challenge that you could do. So the Pi debug challenge was basically a compiled Python file. So it was dot pyvc. And that file you basically had to decode. But it was you could basically just open the file in the text editor page 64 decoded and something else and you had the answer. So it was very easy. Didn't take long. But the other challenges uh, you couldn't do remotely. You had to be at the place. So that was a shame. But that's basically how you solve this challenge. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned and subscribe.